the uneasy, the dinner by himself on the shoulders is a Kohen. Say Kriyashma, Gimel, which is camels, there are three camels in a ruin. The first carrying a lion and a dog, the second carrying a Yonavi, the third carrying a Melech. Dalit is a Dalit, a door that is spanning from Gula neighborhood to Tfila, to, uh, excuse me, to the Kavesa uh, Miklash, the Kotel. On top of it stands David Melech in his Chassid uniform. Hey, there's a Haysak of Yochan, say Kriyashma on the Haysak, but uh, suffering terribly because he's being poked by the Hey, Vav is a stick, or Zera is waving it as he's chasing the Mazikin behind the base Knesses to chase them away because they're digging up Hashem, Hashem's villain, because they heard that's where Hashem can be found. Zion is a gun. Absolutely. Of Shalom is pointing at David Amela, excuse me, at the David Amela, in the Kaddish Gilashim, calling him all sorts of names in his, in his uh, moment of anger, and Moshe Rabbeinu was saying, why do bad things happen to people? And Telling Moshe Rabbeinu he can fight, Dabar Melch, he can, Mutalis Garot, he can fight back against Shalom. And finally, Chet, which is a Chanukia, we have three Chanukia holding up the Talis, it's four by four, um, in which one finds his wife saying, Shlaim Mikro Ekatarim. Okay, now on Dav Tess. Dav Tess of the base at the Mishnah. We got distracted yesterday with the Tchelis issue. Let's just go back to the Mishnah that we were through here. So the Mishnah says, Name a sign current is Shema Vashafras. From when may one say Kriya Shema in the morning? <coughs> so again, it's the parallel of the Vashach Bacha Uvukumecha, the Pasuk says Vashach Bacha, when you lie down, we said when is, when is Shriva time? And when we look at the time, when is Kima time getting up time? <coughs> so the Gemara says, the Mishnah says, Mishiachir, Ben Tchelis Lelavan. When you can tell the difference between blue strings, dot blue wool, dyed by the tchelis, by the chilazon juice, and the the white strings of the tzitzis, and Rabbi Yezer says no, well, we're being tchelis the karsi, not from blue and white, rather blue to green. Light green, right? Because leaf is green. Leaf is, is like quite a light green. Like yeah, they seem to say, I don't know, unfortunately, all kibbutz <coughs> tends towards blue. <coughs> that sounds kind of dark to me. Unfortunately, said that it's a, a green that tends towards blue and leak. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to mean. Just, I don't know what that even means. Um, but you finish it, the ending time is according to Rebbe Leezer. So again, it just, let's frame what we're saying here. We're saying the Pasuk says you should say the Shema when society gets up. Right? That's Uvukumecha, when you collectively get up. What is that? So we're saying, as the Ramban speaks this out, a little later on. He says, when do people get up? When do get up when it's pitch black? That's the sunlight, there's no point in getting up, we can't see a thing. So how much is enough light to consider getting up time? A focus, according to Tanakama, it's you can see the white from blue, according to Relezer, it's the blue from green. And the ending time, according to Relezer anyways, is Neitzachama, because because uh, that's I guess the dilemma whenever most people are up. And Rabbi Shul will argue on that. Rabbi Shul says no, when do people get up? There are certain segments of society that are legitimate segments that get up much later than, than at sunrise, the rich people, the have aristocracy. They, um, we we'll call them Malachim or B'nai Malachim, um, so Rabbi Shulamir, Ad Shalosh Shalos, you have until three hours of the day, Shekin um, Derech Malachim, the way of kings, the king's household, uh, whatever, you know, aristocracy, they do get up, Lamod, B'Shalosh Shalos, at three hours of the day. So he holds that's part of normal societal behavior. <coughs> And therefore, you can rely on it, and perhaps you can um, you can say, like some do, that Rabbi Shua was saying, oh, we're all like sort of like you know aristocracy, every Jew is like aristocracy, the Melech, and therefore we can rely on the, the standards of aristocracy. Um, I told you there's a bit of a question. What we're talking about Chachila and so on. The Raja has a question. Raja says, wait a second. If kings are getting up. At three hours of the day, at <coughs> 9 a.m., so then when they sing Kriya Shema, according to the other holds that you at 6 a.m., it's too late to say it anymore. So he says it must mean that the Rajma holds that you really have till three hours of the day. It's just that um, it's somehow like not ideal anymore. Not ideal anymore. And maybe look at the Yavid, some he's in Zalashim, others in Zalashim, but it's not like before Nate, the Yavid, you still yodes your mitzvah until. You know, the third hour of the day, because that's the people are getting up. As far as Rabbi Yeshua goes, um, the Yushalmi and Babli seem to argue. The Babli, which I guess is, has primacy, and it does have primacy, 
the Bali seems to imply later on, we'll see it, that you have until the third hour of the Chachila, no problem. Yishalmi implies, no, that's the only way to the Chachila, even if Yeshua agrees, you should say Shema before Nitzacham. And we'll see more about the virtues of saying Kriya Shema early before Nitzacham in a moment. Yeah. So in today's time, when this is until the end of the three hours of the day, what day? Okay, good question. That's a good question. So, we said this yesterday a little bit, so we'll speak it out again today. When, when all these Mishnahites talk about hours of the day, we're assuming like this, that we're taking the, the day's hours, but for argument's sake, say there are 12 of them for a moment. Actually, let's, for argument's sake, say that there are um, 12 times 70 is 840, which means, let's, for argument's sake, say there are 840 minutes of daytime in the summer. <coughs> That means 840. So that would mean you divide it into 12 equal portions. Each one is 70 minutes long. And we're saying those are called, those are called shaos zmanios, seasonal hours, if you will. When we say third hour of the day, what we mean is we mean three hours, meaning three times 70, or 210 minutes past the beginning of daytime. There's a couple, there's, a, there's two machloks in like overlay here. The primary one to focus on is. When does the day start in terms of this measurement? Where are we measuring from? So the gra holds from sunrise. So the gra, again, let's park and say, say it's 840 minutes from sunrise to sunset. The gra will say, good, so you take those 840 minutes, divide them by 12, you get 70 minutes per hour, and therefore you'd have creation one time until 3 times 70 is 210, so until 210 minutes after, after sunrise. Mugan Avram argues the gra. It's called the gra and the balhatanya, they're together. For once, Baruch Hashem. So they think they, the Magen Avram says to start from Amr Shachar, or Los Shachar, we'll say the same thing, which pushes it back far, and let's say, let's say 72 minutes, whatever. So then you have a longer day, because it's adding on both sides. So it's 840 minutes far, and say now the days become 1,000 minutes long, whatever the number is, 960 minutes, whatever. Let's say 960 minutes, because that's the wise way, it's 80, 12 times. So the Magen would say, well, each halach hour is 80 minutes. Long, so you have three times that is two forty, not two ten. But but you start. Well, you're starting earlier. So you're starting at you start <laughs> or you know whatever it is you know an hour a bit before sunrise. So the ending time ends up being the mother of them ends up saying you have less time to say creation ironically. Although as hours are longer, since so it starts the day earlier, you have less time. Is that too abstract? Should I, should I drop on the board of the numbers? You're good. You're good. You're yeah. good? Okay. Um, Fine. So that, that's what's going on. So we say hours, we mean these, these halachic shows, smanios, you know, seasonal hours. And that will cut both ways. Obviously, in wintertime, when the, instead of having 7 or 20 hours of the day, you could have, for argument's sake, and have 600 minutes, uh, hour, minutes, 600 minutes of day, so then you divide that by 12, you're left with 50. So you have 50 minute hours, which is what those, those are roughly, by the way, usual line, and I presume the challenge is the same thing, more or less. It roughly is in the Longest day of the year, which is June 20th, May 1st. So it is roughly around 70 minutes. And in the winter, December 21st, it's around 50 minutes. So roughly. Okay. So that's but, but obviously, speaking it out, the higher, the farther you go from the equator, like if you're living in London, like I once did, or Manchester, even worse, you know, or whatever, if you live in you know, Stockholm, the further we go from the equator, the more extreme these, these factors are. Um, so much so that it can actually like they can end up overlapping. Like in the height of the summer, it's not so. It's not so. The, depending, if you use some extreme cheetahs in terms of what defines these things, because the other one folks them, you actually can have. Like I, I remember in London we had this problem that there's some cheetahs that you have to have. Have work one second. From love malka, love malka, you have to have love malka. Six hours. So there's a sheet that I think I've actually learned about it now. There's a sheet you have to have malka six hours. You have to finish malka before six hours before the break of day, which didn't exist anymore because that's you know the lack broke up the rate of time anyways. Like the, the end of the day was so late at night and not, they overlapped. You know, had so so to speak happened before, before it says. It sounds ridiculous, but obviously it gets it gets crazier until you get above the Arctic Circle and you actually have no day. And the sun sets above the horizon at the same time, etc. Midnight sun. Okay, I'm not discussing what to do in those scenarios. Don't live there, I'm going to have a problem. But uh, that's the story. So that's what we mean by, by hours here. And, and so, 
that's the whole way through. We'll see the hours all the way through. There's another machlokas here, interestingly. When we say to the third hour, do we mean to the beginning of the third hour or the end of the third hour? So Rashi seems to understand elsewhere. We saw before, we talked about the name of and Rashi seems to think that the king, king's men are getting up at the beginning of the third hour. <coughs> There's a big riot to that. The fact that we have that so here before, the Gimel of the base, Dabra Melech said, I get up, you know, I get up eight hours early, Ashmuros, two times four Ashmuros, and we had six of them from midnight to the break of day, and then two more until the kings are getting up. That suggests that we have the beginning of the third hour, not three. Okay, so some answer that they're getting up, you know, they hit the snooze button from, you know, at 8 a.m. they open their eyes the first time, but they're kind of lounging around in bed till now they finally get out. So it's like that extended period of time while they're getting out. Whatever it is. Others learn in this halacha that we mean to the end of the third hour. That's the halacha. Okay? Fine. Um, as far as the machlok is seen, Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Eliezer, and Rabbi Yeshua, it's like the argument over is it blue and white versus green and blue. So let's think about it. I have a suggestion to make. This could be Joel Pavis's crazy 21st century brain computing meaning on the Mishnah's text. But I would like to point out that. We'll see in a minute the sukkahs can go on to say, wait a second, you can see blue versus white even during the night time. And, and perhaps that's what Rabbi Eliezer is saying. He's saying, wait a second, between blue and white? That, that, that's a ridiculous sheet because that happens even in the middle of the night. It's not, there's no indication it's time to get up. Because really, a person, okay, now I'm warning. This is me thinking a little bit. I, I'm, I'm suggesting this is really true, but I'm being provided that, that it's my opinion, you know, it's my tradition, it might be true. Human beings, where our visual system is really unusual. We actually have two, in our cornea, where we see, we have two different kinds of cells. Some are called rods, some are called cones. The rods, which we have more of, are much, much more sensitive to light and than the cones, but they only see in black and white, or gray okay? cell. And, and when you have night vision at night, so if you've ever tried to go see the comet, and I really get you, you wait till your eyes get acclimated to the darkness, but that means essentially is that the, the, the rods are in full force and the cones are being ignored. Okay? And, and uh, they, they need to reset. They, they, they need to reset it in the darkness. So, um, when you're in the dark, your rods are what are seen, the rod cells are what are seen, and in the daytime, primarily it's your cone cells that are seen. Rods see black and white, cones see in color. So you need, enough, you need sufficient light to like sort of like turn on the cones. They, they're not triggered until much, much more light. Let's say a thousand times as much light. A thousand times as much light. A much, much more potent light. Your rods can pretty much see in a moonless night without a problem. They can still see in a moonless night if your rod cells and can see dark from light. See dark from light. You walk in a moonless night in a forest, it's not literally, not forget okay, forest, in an open area where not. You're not literally like can't see the things in front of you. You'd have a, a white shirt, you would see there's something in front of you, it's not just blackness. Those are your rods in action. And it, it may well be that like when you're the nighttime vision that one has is it even considered the beginning of day yet, perhaps. Let's suggest Rabbi Eliezer, and then he says, listen, seeing blue from white strings, it's like you're seeing that grayscale. It's like you can see that night also. So what's a great hop there? You need to have some two different colors which requires your cones to kick in, to kick in and requires a whole different like daytime conditions, but the nighttime conditions, and therefore he says wait till day kicks in. I'm suggesting that as a possible explanation of like the nature of vision is very different. And perhaps, perhaps they were much more acutely aware of this and they use artificial lighting that sort of perhaps day daytime vision is different than nighttime vision. They were aware like they were not just aware of it academically, but they actually were aware of it experientially they could see like, so to speak, oh, if I can see white from dark, white from dark, but still, I'm still in, it's still the night. <clears throat> like, I can see it throughout the night. And seeing color requires day. I'm speculating that that's, that's lurking in the machlokas there. Anyways, very possible. Otherwise, it's hard for me to know, like, I can't think of another reason why, like, he's saying, oh, no, seeing blue from white, that's not light enough. You more like to say, that's when people get out of bed. And so the point is, like, oh, your eyes are still at night. It's nighttime. The fact that, the fact that there's some light doesn't make it not nighttime. Nighttime in terms of, like, social nighttime. I feel like you got it. Okay, that's my.
my speculative thoughts there. In any case, um, the Mishnah continues on. Hakar v'kan ve'elech. If one reads Kriyashma after the third hour, lo he doesn't lose anything. Or doesn't lose everything, I should say. Rather, his ka'adam hakar of the Torah is like a person just reading so from the Torah. Because it's in Kriyashma. And that's better than nothing. Yeah, partial credit, let's call it. But I don't think partial credit is probably the shot here because he's not getting any credit for his, his Kriyashma. He's getting alternate credit. <coughs> right? So I don't, I don't know. It's alternate credit. The question then becomes like, yeah, of course. Like, what was happening? You're saying, Sokka, why should we get the <coughs> Why is it uh, Mishta coming to add that? that nature transforms after the three hours. The nature of reciting Kriyashma is transformed. Right, so you're no, you're no longer fulfilling the myths of Kriyashma, you're just learning Torah. Yeah. True. If, that, if that's what it's saying, <coughs> the question then becomes, well, like, who knows the mitzvah of reading Pesukim? So what's the mishnah say? Oh, you missed Kriyashma? Well, don't worry, at least you're reading Pesukim. Like, it doesn't say don't worry, it just says, like, you didn't lose everything, you still have the scar of reading Pesukim. Like, what's the chiddush in that? What's the chiddush in that? So, basic approaches would be either that, you know, when you say Kriyashma, so there's like, there's the, the kim of the mitzvah. There's like, let's call it like the, the message of the mitzvah, let's say you remember that Hashem is one. There's a mitzvah, don't forget to remember Hashem is one. So, so you're not fulfilling Hashem's command to remember Hashem is one. You just happen to be doing the remembering. So, so you don't fulfill the tzibu, but you're getting the benefit. Others, so that would suggest, perhaps, that you get a two for one when you're saying Kriyashma. You're getting the mitzvah, and you're getting the, like, the mitzvah of Kriyashma, and it's called the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Two things. Whereas when you stop when the Zman passes, you're no longer getting the Kriyash you're just getting the mitzvah of the Talmud Torah. The Rabbi Yon doesn't like that because it seems too push at them. But Yon is a very funny, I'm just saying funny, is a very like um, novel, like out there understanding. He suggests that perhaps you wouldn't normally get, if you say Kriyash Mabal Pet, as we tend to do, so you wouldn't get Sahar perhaps at all for reading Sukkim because you're not reading them. And that could be an issue. Really think those terms, but it could be that Mikra has to be read, not said, and his deed not to say Mikra has to be read, and that. So he suggests that that's not true by Kriyashma, you still get the scar of reading it, even when you're not reading it, you're just saying it all that, because they're familiar with Sukkim and so on. Okay, so different approach, but there's something funny there. The Gemara will ask more about the history of business, but we'll leave it for now. Okay, so that's the mission. Let me see, any questions on the mission? Good. Okay, so the Gemara picks up and says, "My vein tells the lava." What's it supposed to mean when it says, "Identify the difference between blue and white, blue wool, just tells and white wool." And even I think gavava the amr chivra, the gavava the amr the tchilta. If you mean it's just, because remember, tchilas means wool dyed blue, not the color. So if tchilas means dyed wool dyed blue, if you mean like you have two piles of wool, one pile is white, one pile is dyed blue, so then you, you, you can spot which is the dark one, which is the light one, even in the night time. Like I told you before, you have you know, your rods are in action, you can see it. So that's inconceivable, because that wouldn't be marking anything through the day. That's like the middle of the night, you can see that. Ella, Ben Shabbat, Love and Shabbat. The more said, no, you mean the blue in it can be discerned from the white in it, period. Now, in the living Gemara, and he's raising pronouns, he gets in trouble. So in it, what's the it that we're referring to? So Rashi understands we're talking about big bowls of wool, and we're saying if you take a bowl of wool and you dye it blue, trelet, so there will necessarily be patches in it that are not as well um, dyed, the way you dyed as other parts. You can pick out like the white specks inside the blue. That's what Rashi understands. So again, the Gemara says, what do you mean discern? discern the mission said you can discriminate between blue wool and white wool. The Gemara says, what's it supposed to mean? A big bunch of white wool and a bunch of blue wool, you can see the difference in the, in the middle of the night. So the answer is no. You can just differentiate the blue in it from the white in it. So Rashi says, in it means a big bunch of 
of the wool that you've dyed together, you can pick out, pick out the white flecks. Why doesn't anyone say just looking at your own tzitzit? Because so obviously... Tosa, that's the, the Tosa, good question. So Tosa says, what are you talking about? I mean, who's going to carry around a ball? Of <laughs> yeah, so first of all, exactly. So first of all, the whole, the whole thing is like a ridiculous year because who's going to have a ball of wool? And second of all, like even if you say, well, you have a bureau of standards, you can go and you know, check it out. Like, even if you have standard bowls of wool, this it's not standard how much blue and white is absorbed. Like, right. you know, like, do you mean this well done? Do you mean like A grade dyeing? Do you mean B grade dyeing? The whole thing is a grade of On top of it, Tos is bothered by a very important technical classroom, which is the mission that I, I mentioned to you um, yesterday, I forgot to mention today, which is like, why are we blue with this thing at all? Like, where's the trailers coming into the picture? And, and the Gemara in Menacho says that when the Pasuk says, Ur'isam also, and you will see it, it's talking about the blue string on your trellis, and the Gemara says that's, it says, we will, it's a hard one, it's called Mitzvah Hashem, you will remember the Mitzvah of Hashem, it's a reference to Kriya Shema. And it says over there, to tie it together, that, that, that this Mitzvah is taller than that Mitzvah, meaning Kriya Shema, Mitzvah is talui, it's dependent upon um, the blue trellis Mitzvah. So yesterday I just said that that drasha is why they bring in trellis all together here. The Tzitzis, the third part of Shema that we read, has a reference to Tchelis, which, re which reminds you of Kriya Shema specifically, to be like a cue for saying Kriya Shema in the morning. But Tosa says, wait a second, the actual words of the Gemara were, this mitzvah is dependent on that mitzvah. So like, if it's actually a dependency of the mitzvah of Tchelis string in Tzitzis to the mitzvah of Kriya Shema, like how you see that in big balls of wool. So therefore he says, it must be the shot that we're talking about standard blue and white that you can see on your tinsel strings. And although the clash is well, if it's you know a big mountain of white, a big mountain of blue, of course it's even with dark, which is white. But if you're talking about tinsel, which is the chulio or tie alternating blue, white, blue, white, more of a trick now, more of a trick to discern you know the close things switched together, blue and white chulio loops that are together, as you might see. You might see so that's a close to understand. Shabbat doesn't mean in its being a ball of wool, it's in its your tzitzis, which have blue and white strings. So Good. Okay. Um, Does that mean if the, um, if the mitzvah is dependent on the trelet, that people don't wear trelet and not the kind of mitzvah? Hmm. No, it's just that in the long part, they wonder what time to say Kriya Shema is really as possible. Oh. And, and you'll see in a second, the Gemara will start the other share in a minute. But it's a good important point, I want to speak out for a second. It's the Gemara speaks out in Menachos, black and white, explicitly. The thing is that it, 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 there are two separate mitzvahs. Not forget Krishna. Krishna is like something else. Also, a third separate mitzvah. But um, there's a mitzvah of wearing tzitzis, and there's a mitzvah of putting a tchelis <coughs> string, of the chilazon blood dye string, on your tzitzis, or two strings of tzitzis, whatever it is. So, and then one is on the akiv the other. One doesn't depend upon the other. So, you have. The mitzvah tzitzis is fully fulfilled with just love on it, just the white strings that you wear, 100%. But you're not getting the additional mitzvah, there's two mitzvahs, the additional mitzvah of wearing Yeah, so they're not, they're not dependent, and that's why. But who are you, what you're saying, if it's theoretically just have the tchelis and no white? And like just two little strings of tchelis and. Well, no, not, that's not called tzitzis. Ah, okay. But that's not called tzitzis anymore. So, so that so it's strictly dependent on the other one. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. You can't fulfill the trellis in your tzitzis if you don't have tzitzis. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. But but the point is correct. That is true. That is true. But you can't. Uh, but you don't need the trellis to fulfill the mitzvah tzitzis in b'shlemus and completeness. Yeah. How do we know it's two separate mitzvahs? I mean, is that one of the six hundred thirteen? Yeah. Yes. Two of the six thirteen. Yeah. It is. It's a gemara Yeah. But the, the, the now we have now only six. Is that tzitzis or just that? So yesterday we spent a whole hour discussing it, that, that many believe, myself amongst them, yes. actually I should explain, but that, that we do have, that we have a real animal, this animal called the New York Chocolis, a snail, from the Mediterranean coast, is the real deal, for real. And that's in the cities today. And that's, that's like, the Patil and Tuchelis company, like, yes. yeah, they actually get a real those snails in Croatia. 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 Well, they, they are off the coast of Israel too, mm -hmm. but they're protected. Those snails are protected by whoever. Really? Yes, they're protected. Not because they're in the zone, they're protected because they're endangered species or whatever. They're protected species really? whatever. Yeah. They can't. So that's why if you go, 
I've never done it. I, on Cholamod, I, don't know if I, I mentioned to you, I was going to Cholamod, my plan was to go to the Tchelet factory there by Zikroniako, <laughs> but um, my kids couldn't interact together, so I couldn't go. But there you actually go scuba diving, or whatever, snorkeling, you find the snails, you pull them out, but they put them back in the water, they don't kill them. The ones they kill have come from Spain or, or Croatia. Yeah. I think I think Croatia. Not from China. Um, no, not from China. That's yeah. yeah. so, for Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, or, 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 or Spain, either of them there. Um, what were saying? Oh, so, y so yesterday I told you that I don't think, I, from what I've seen, I can't believe anybody could look at it and say, like, it's not it, Davka. But that said, I went to talk to Rablon yesterday about, about Tchelis, yet again, a thousand times. And he told me that, um, that Rav Asher Weiss has a number of chubas saying that it's definitely not Tchelis. It's not Tchelis. Rav Asher Weiss is a post -it. Okay, I haven't even posted it. So, uh, I haven't seen the chubas. He said he's going to try to find them for me. But anyway, so clearly there are, there's somebody out there, at least one person, who has specific reasons why it's not Tchelis. Rav Eliyashev, I'm going to get back to this again today. It doesn't talk about it for a long time. Rav Eliyashev was saying that there is some, you're, you have a hefzid, but not when you he wants just white for some measures to bluff him and so on, which, but, but, uh, but there is apparently, there, in terms of, there is apparently a voice who says it can't, can't be or isn't the right to find tails. I don't know what, I don't know any more tenants yet. Anyways, not going back there today. Um, yeah, fine. So. That's also it's actually it's, it's a string that you should look at the Julio of the loops of your census and you'd see the blue from white, that's how you know if it's time to say creation by Anton. Tanya, we have a Brysa. The Brysa gives alternate measures for spotting when it's time to say creation on the earliest time. But Meir Omer, Mishiakir being Ze'ev Lekele. When you can identify distinguish between uh, Zev, which is a wolf, and a kelev, which is a dog. I don't know if you saw the news recently, but there has been a series of wolf attacks in northern Israel. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? We have wolves in Israel. I saw a picture of a wolf. I haven't seen one in real life. And they look a lot like dogs. I say the, the wolves we have here are not these like gray, you know, Alaskan snow wolves or anything like that. dogs. But in any case, if you can say that's a dog or a wolf, that's the amount of light you need. Maybe Kivo Mare being Chamor La Ervad, like a donkey domesticated versus a wild, wild ass. I don't know if these even look like exactly, but then the point is again that they're similar but not exactly the same. But Kherim, others, um, it's funny, no? It just dawned on me that Kherim <coughs> usually means Rabbi Meir. He's called a cherem because you learn from a cherem. Oh, Another time, why is called a cherem? But I'm just noticing now the pennies drop in my head that Rabbi Meir is in this price also. Yeah, it is. So I didn't I didn't chat this right now. There, there, there are other gersos that combine the first two shitas, the kelev and the chamor shitas together, and not two for shitas with keep the mayor. Maybe they're all making that stink and putting out the gear set to resolve. I don't know right now. Maybe the issue is not repair to be stricken from the Mishnah because we have a hair in the Mishnah also. I, I, I didn't come more thinking about this. It percolated in my mind right now. In any case, whatever it is, Allah is like a hair, <coughs> wherever he is, not repair, that it says it's Mishir, Mishir, Chavero, Rich Dal Amos, Viyakaren. Did you see <coughs> your friend at the distance of four Amos? Seven feet, whatever it is, and you recognize him. That's not helpful either, because what if you're the first one to chew? There's <laughs> nobody there. Right. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Well, okay. Indeed, it won't be helpful then. Um, so, to, to also ask, like, uh, like, you know, people you know well, you can spot in the dark because of the way they walk. Yeah. You can recognize their breathing. So, like, what do you need to have? Right. Like, if you're, if you're at Don Amos, I mean, you can hear them reading you're close. So he says it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean someone who's like, you know well, that you recognize, like, you know, their gait or something. That, that's obviously not the point. The point is, someone who you vaguely know, the guy, you know, the guy who comes into Mishnah share every once in, uh, you know, once a month, and, and like, if you wouldn't, you know, if you see, you need to see his face to recognize the guy. Like, you recognize him, you, re you will recognize him if you get a good look at his face, but you don't really know the guy well enough to pick him out of the, in the dark. 
dark alleyway, whatever. So I don't know how useful it is for measurements, but anyways, that's that's how it's codified. The control of the brought them like that. The distance, not like you can recognize your friend you don't know so well at a distance of four almost. Those are four stopwatches they needed some some way to do it, and that's it. I always wondered. I didn't see this anywhere, but I'm just saying it obviously must mean on a moonless night. I, I don't know, obviously. To me, it seems that it must be. Otherwise, like, in the, in the moonlight, if your eyes are used to the moonlight, like, you can see just fine. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you're able to see it. Go, go try it. Just go, you know, the, the, the mountain biking gang that I'm part of. So, <laughs> once in a while in the summer, they go on a bike ride in the full moon in the dark. So like just, I'm just, that means moving fast on the bike in the dark. You can see in the dark. You can see when the moons are out. Um, in fact, even by the way, even your I talk about rods and cones. Even your cones can are, can be activated by the full moon. It's an uplight. It's, it's not dark in the full moon. So my point is, so it must not make sense. Yeah. You know, when I was uh, at this time, when I was passing around the pictures. You know, from that time, when I was in Yeshiva, um, I had a mountain bike there in addition to my road bike and. Um, I was invited by someone to, to go on this very uh, nighttime ride. Uh, it was uh, on the 15th of Cheshvan. The, the moon was completely full, clear right. sky. And I was skeptical. Do I need a light? They say no. They say they honestly say no. I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and try this, you know? And, and for sure they were right. We needed no lights. I, I was able to see the details in front of me. No problem. Yeah, so amazing, I was just by right? the full light of the moon. It was a ride about three hours. Right. No problem. Right. We don't, the reason why we don't appreciate that much, it sounds funny to us, is because it takes some time, a good amount of time, I don't know how many minutes it is, but let's say 20 minutes, 15 minutes, that kind of number, like a good amount of minutes for your, uh, your visual system to shift over to, to being like, let's call, it, let's call it rod based instead of cone based, you know what I mean? That's why if you ever go on astronomical trips or whatever, you go like to the stars, or anyone done that before, they have these, like the red, the red lights. If you, if you ever, it's, it's so worth doing. Maybe one though, maybe even one time in the summer, I'll put it together for you guys will go out just to go look at the stars and they're spectacular. Here, it's beautiful. When you go, you can't really see the stars. Like if you go out at midnight and a moonless night and a Rosh Chodesh to go see the stars, it takes about 15 minutes or so of like have no lights, no lights, till you're seeing all the stars. Your like, eyes aren't used to the darkness, and getting used to the dark means that obviously your pupil dilates quite fast, well, it does dilate quite fast, but to get everything Fully adapted to the darkness takes time. And then you see a very different thing in the dark. You know, the Those of us who have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, you come back into the bedroom, you can't right. see anything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That, so that's probably the largest damage like the pupil dilation, which is enough. It's like if you go out, which is just in the middle of your shop's meal, and a kid is having his best shop's, she walked outside of the sun, she came back and said, it was so dark in here. It just, that's, that's the, the eye, the eye's amazing. The eye can modulate to about um, can see in conditions ranging from about multiple, about a billion amount of light. In other words, you can see, you can make out things in conditions that are a billion times darker than like, you know, the full, you know, full bright sunny day, a billion times less light. In any case, that's all not for now. Um, the point is that, that uh, in the dark, like the moon doesn't seem very bright <coughs> because you're coming out of a lit room and going out for two minutes to go say, you know, Kiddush Lavana or something. Doesn't seem very bright. Once your eyes get used to the dark and you're it's adapted to work on moonlight, it's very bright. So I'm convinced that this Allah here of recognize your friend the Allah was without the aid of moonlight. It must mean, you know, the sun has come up on the horizon enough to light the place up. That's my only point. Otherwise you could recognize your friend in the in the, in the pitch in the, in the stroke of midnight and full moon's out, so I can't do that. Okay, fine. I'll do a better trip one of these days in the summer we'll go out and it's the red light. Oh, oh, sorry, that's not, not, not relevant, but the point is that the red light, uh, red light is less um, energetic, the wavelength is longer than, than, than blue light, uh, and actually the red light is not um, energetic enough to stimulate your comet. So what happens is, like if you go on an astronomy trip, you'll see Halley's Comet, whatever the story is, the first, I did that when I was a little boy, that was the first time I saw it, they use these red lights. And even like, high, like my, I don't know how I have to look for it, but I have this like headlight that goes blunt, like a like a caving light, it's like mm -hmm. an iron caving headlight. I like to that also. So we have to, it has two settings. It has like the yellow, the white 
like your LED bright light, which is what you use, and then it has also a red light. Because in the red light, your eyes do not get, like if you're waiting for your eyes to get used to the dark, the red light doesn't mess it up. It doesn't. That, you probably remember that from a dark room. This is a little before my time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on the cusp of the digital age. But that was, you, in the dark room, they would use red lights because the light was strong enough to overdevelop and all the, the, the film that's coming out the camera. That's the Same with you. Okay. Dark rooms. Interesting. Okay. So that's that. I'm Reb Zehra, my prof. Reb Zehra wants to know what is the passage that tells you that you should be saying Kriya Shema at Nate's time. So he says, I'm sorry, I said, I said, I'm Ravuna. Ravuna says, Allah is like a khair. Ravuna says, Allah is like a khair, meaning that you have to have enough light to be able to recognize your friend, you sort of know at a distance of four hours. I'm Rabbi, the tefillin ka khair. Rabbi says, tefillin the halacha like a khair, but not Kriya Shema. By the way, the halacha is sort of like it for both, meaning that the you should say the earliest time for putting on tefillin is also going to be when you have enough light to see your friend in Dalai Lama's. The point is that day is beginning. Why are they connected? The fear with tefillin is that if you doze off, if you doze off, then we're afraid that you're going to pass gas when you sleep. When you put tefillin on, therefore we're going to sleep at night, we fear that you will doze off. In practice, my observation is, my, just my first-hand experience is, I don't know if this is the Allah, but is that in New York, when I die in the winter time, they put on a, and, and let's say the minute starts at 6 a.m., but let's say that at the earliest time I'm putting on film is 6.30, so what I see people do, you like the rub, I saw them do, is like put on film at 6 o'clock, like when you get, you know, putting on film for dominating, but they don't make a broth on the film, and then by 6.30, they've already got to like whatever it is, I'll show you the ceiling of the stories, they'll then like, mash then they'll take the, put it back on and say, make a broth of them. My, my point is, in my observation, maybe, maybe I've observed people break the halacha. My observation is people do put on tefillin before the time they just don't say the brach on it. That's my observation. But the Gemara here is saying, no, the Gemara is saying that you should be putting on tefillin that early. And the reason is because let you fall Same with Talos. I mean, same with Talos. Yeah, Talos is more. Talos, so Talos and Bracha the same story. You need daytime for Isam to see it. Um, but there, we're not afraid of sleeping on talus. You can sleep on sits, it's no problem, you can, so therefore it's not an issue. But tefillin, you, this halacha is saying, I mean, I'm saying now, this Gemara here is saying, you should not put on tefillin until you can see your friend in four hours, because it's, <coughs> now, why? These are my words inserted. Because it's still the night time, and people are tired at night, and they'll fall asleep, and if you fall asleep wearing a tefillin, you're liable to pass gas, which, we, which is also wearing a tefillin on, therefore don't put on tefillin too early. And by the way, it's saying on the far side also. You know, people get very, I remember there, when I learned in Yeshiva in Little City, so there were a bunch of Quranics over there, they were tefillin all day long. And I remember once after Shkia, there was like some guys still wearing a tefillin, like, they all got very uppity. I didn't know anything, I didn't know better. But there were some people who didn't know better who were like, like, chill out, it's okay. The issue is, for fear he's going to fall asleep, like, he's not falling asleep. So, like, he should take off the tefillin, but it's not like, frantic. And like, he's like, driving a car, and, like, oh my gosh, the sun already said it's Shia and Shabbos, what are you doing? It wasn't like that. They were acting as if he, like, broken the law because it's past, you know, the sun is down, you shouldn't be wearing tefillin anymore. In any case, we do not wear tefillin during the nighttime for that reason. Therefore, we take it off by Shia time and put it on only this time. It's if the person's extremely tired because he had a whole night, and he shouldn't have Perhaps, yeah, just like he shouldn't have driving a car. But then, but then, the Allah doesn't, like, so you know, a lot of sort of we don't want to have everyone making their, their own judgment calls. So the rule is daytime's okay, <coughs> nighttime's not okay. Indeed, if you're falling asleep, you should take them off. Just like just just like use your own good judgment. They don't legislate against that. Same way you shouldn't be driving. You know, when you're when you're tired, you're like just as liable, to, like just likely to have an accident as if you're drunk. By the way, I guess that's how tired I'm drunk. The point is being tired is dangerous to drive a car and. But there's a whole lot of can't. It's proven that you shouldn't. Same with wearing to fill in if you're tired. Okay, that's that. Um, so uh, Abayah says, the tefillin kafir. As far as tefillin goes, you have, let's say, 50, 5, 0 minutes before an 8 and make them number up. Because then, by then already, you could read and have enough light to see your friend in four hours. But for Kriya Shema, no, no, no. You should wait till much later in the morning. Kvasikin. You shouldn't say Kriya Shema unless you do it like the Kivasikin, like the Vasikin do it. Vasikin means, look at Rashi, this is important. 
we're in the Vasikan room at the minute. But anyways, Kavasikan. So Rashi says, where's that Rashi? Okay, Vasikan. So he says, Anashim Anavim, humble people, Machavin Mitzvah, they love mitzvahs. So I just want to like differentiate here. We're talking about people, the Vasikan who do their Kriya Shema, the, the word means, um, People, the Rashi focus on the humility of them, which which tells me that we're talking about not one upsmanship, not like to, not people who like are you know mahadram and mahadram. No, we don't mean that. We don't mean people who are like there because they want to be super from. And I don't mean that. I don't intend to mean that like as a pejorative. I don't mean it that way. But like. In this day and age, there are plenty of people who kind of feel that the, if you're serious about doing what Hashem wants, you should be mocking with everything because you never know. And like, I'm not coming to say yeah or nay on that approach to Lotus Hashem. I'm just saying it doesn't mean that here. But seek, the word for seeking means, and Rashi speaking out, are people who are anavim. They don't care about other people. They, they say they love to serve Hashem. And because that's their anavim, and their machavim, and so they love to serve Hashem. And the way they do it, is the way you ought to do it in terms of Kriya Shema. What's that? The Rav Yochanan, Vasikin, the Vasikin, the, those who are, you know, serious Ode Hashem, Hayu Gomer Nosa Imhanei Tachama, they would finish saying Kriya Shema just in time for sunrise. So that's the point. So Rabbi is saying the time to say Kriya Shema is right, right before sunrise, you know, like say six minutes, the Ramah seems to be the shear of six minutes before, like six minutes before, um, sunrise, that's ideal time to say Krishna right before sunrise. And that's how you do it. Like this is called the Vasikan room because Vasikan has become synonymous with dominating chakras in a way that you hit Shimon Esrei right at the as at night of the sun rise. So you see over there, look, there's a sign there for today, so I'll give a little ER that says Shema is five fifty and Nate's is you know six fifteen there you go, it's five minutes and fifteen seconds prior. So that's that's how they're Mashaks. The point is, if you're a bas- if you're the Vasika, the guys who get a bit of done at night, they're saying Krishna, in this case, five minutes and 15 seconds before sunrise. It's something like that as a buy right at the end of, like, by the buzzer. Okay? Fine. Um, so that's the F on Tanya Tanya Nami we have a Brysa which says just like that. The Brysa says. What is the end of the previous Brysa? The only verse in today starts with the word Tanya Reb Meir Omer, and it finishes at the word Vayakirena, like a line and a half down. The first line is Eft. At Chaver Rechuk Rechuk Tal Ramos Vayakirena. You see him at four Ramos and you recognize him. End of Brisa. Now Amr Rav Huna. Rav Huna is an Amor. Rav Huna says dot dot dot. And now we're going to have a new Brisa picking up here. Tanya Tanya was taught in Brisa. Nami also Hachi, like thusly, and it was the same. Idea was also on Brisa. Quote: Brisa begins, Vatikin, the people who love mitzvahs that are on Avim, Hayu Gomer Osa Imanei Tachama. They would finish Kriyashma with the rising of the sun. Kadesh Yismach Gul the Tefila, just so that they could um, conjoin, you know, join together. Geula meaning the Gaal Yisrael Bracha, loosely speaking, to Tefila to Shmona Esrei. And the nimsa mit pal beyond, and it turns out they're dabbing right at the break of day. In other words, like we dabbing eight, you know what I mean? But they say, Gal Yisrael, and then it strikes six o'clock and fifteen seconds, and they walk into Hashem society of Tach, end of Brisa. So that's it's, the Brisa says the Vatik and those who really love mitzvahs, what do they used to do? Past tense, by the way, interesting. But anyways, past tense, they used to finish Kriyashma right before the Nates so that they could say the brachas after, in my words, brachas after Kriyashma, right? So that they are ready to say Gaal Yisrael right as they go into Shemana Esrei and Nimtza, it'll turn out that then Pel Beyond, they're dabbing Shemana Esrei right during the break of day as the Pasuk before it's, oh, sorry, yeah, good. And the Brachas. I'm Rabbi Zaira. Rabbi Zaira says, my Kra, like who says it's such a Big deal to dive like that. So he so Pasik says, Virucha im Hashemesh, and they will fear you with the sun, dor dorim, and before the moon for generations. End quote. That's a Pasak in Tehillim. 
So understanding is that Yeruchi Mashemesh means they will express their Yerush Shemaim, meaning they'll go into Shemona Esrei, they'll start davening to you, in Mashemesh as the sun arrives, and with Neireach, like right before the beginning of night, they will also say Mincha prayer, because the ideal time for Mincha prayer is at the very end of the day. So the Patsik is being Darshan to mean they will express their Yiras Hashem with the arrival of the sun, that's chakras, and again in the afternoon, before the beginning of the night, meaning at the end of the day, meaning Mincha time, Allah Mincha, Dor Dorim, for generations. End quote. That's what Zerah's Pasuk to say that guy that shows you the importance of Dabi right at the beginning of the day. Heid, Riviosi ben Eliakim, Misham Kahala Kadisha to be Yushalayim. So this is like a, you know, like a testimony that the, the, the old holy Jerusalem community, I guess was there, I guess was there, I mean, this is this more being written in the year 400, let's call it, and no one, they're living in Baha, but they're saying there's some remnant of Jews that, you know, in Jerusalem, and those Jews back in Jerusalem, they had a Masora that said, Kol HaSomach Gul Tzfila, anybody who manages to exactly get Gula, Next to Tefillah, meaning Gal Yisrael next to Shmona Esrei, and Tosso speaks out and says, Well, that's how you always tell them. Who didn't say Gal Yisrael before they start Shmona Esrei every day of their lives? He's done with Shafras. We don't mean that. We mean at Nei Tachama. We managed to pull this one off that you at Nei Tachama, do Gula Tefillah, then Eino Nizak Kol Hayom Kulo. Nothing bad will happen to him the whole day long. The day that you've done Kavasikin at Nei, as you should, you're like, you're protected, nothing bad will ever happen to you. Abram Zerah. Reb Zera, which was just a minute ago, I told you that in my mind, Reb Zera is like, um, I can embarrass to say this, but, but it, in my mind, Reb Zera is like this grumpy old man, and he keeps on being like that. So like, even if Khalil Chas Shalom, he's like a grumpy old man, he was just like a very, really very straight-laced person, but like, uh, he has, there's a picture of him in my head, which at least, if nothing else, helps me to I hope I don't mean to grumpy old man, Chas Shalom, but it's like that, that, it, you, I can always remember, if once I had like a face, like a name, a face to a name, you know what I mean? I can remember like all these mamara of Rebzera because like, it's consistent with the guy who I'm imagining. Anyways, here's Rebzera. Rebzera was, he's like super, he always wants everything like, just so. So Rebzera, a minute ago, was, he's the one pushing for Nate's dogging, not surprising, because you know, now here he's, he says, that was the micro. I'm Rebzera, Amy, he says, oh yeah, you, is it really true that nothing bad's going to happen? They, they promised to Jerusalem? Well, it's not true, because look what happened to me. Uh, I once was so much cool as Philip and Nate, and I thought the Nate's they should. The Itzaki, and something very bad happened to me that day, so they attacked him. They, and they said, Oh, come on, the Mike is Zakta. Like, now exactly what bad happened to you that day? You're trying to tell us, you're talking about the time that the Antaisa Asal of Bain Malka, that they forced you to bring, you know, like, Myrtles. Myrtle branches, yeah, to the king's, king's palace, palace, the king's palace, and that's going to cost you some dough. They, you know, they said, hey, the people at the phone said, hey, bring us, bring us the myrtle, and that cost you, you know, whatever, 50 bucks, you had to go shopping. So that's what you're complaining about, that's what you call getting damaged on the day. Hasam nani mi boy lach la mehav agra. You know, you should be willing to, to, that was like a, that was your lucky day. You should be willing to pay for, for the opportunity to schlep the myrtle up to the, the king. So you can get a good look at the, uh, so you can behold Lily, so you can see the face of the king, the Goetia king. Because the, for the Zuchus of seeing a Goetia king, even a Goetia king, you should be willing to pay for that. So don't tell me you're the lucky guy to buy the king's palace. You can't go that, you know, a day that something bad happened to you. You need to serve. Yes, uh, yeah, you can. It's roughly said exactly. So now, why? Why should you care to see the Goetia king's face? What's well, the deal? Tom Rabbi Yochanan, because Rabbi Yochanan said, La Olam. Yishtadel Adam the roots. A person should always try to run the Krat Malchi Yisrael. A person should, should make an effort to, to run to see a Jewish king, to greet the Jewish king. Not just Jewish kings. Even to, you know, greet a non Jewish king. Akum actually, Akum is like a, a, not a nice word. It means like, meaning idolatry. Even like, oh, sometimes a king, Goyish king, like, you can be excited to be a Goyish king. Go, Goy is not a pejorative. But Akum means like a, it's a pejorative. It means like, 
Oh, the Avodah Even a king who's like Mamash Oved Avodah Zarah, you still should run to see that guy. Shin Yizkeh, because if you're fortunate enough to actually see the guys face to face, and you see what comes with the king's procession, whatever it is, Yavchin, you'll be able to distinguish Bein Malchi Yisrael and Malchi Akom. You'll be able to, to appreciate the difference between a Jewish king and a non, a non-Jewish king. Um, so, now, what does it mean? So, Ibi Yizke means not if you're Zoha to see this, see this Goyish king's face, but it means if you're there to see the ultimate Gula, when the king, Mashiach, will return, so then if they will return, when the, when the king, when the Mashiach will, when the Malchus will return to the people under the auspices of the Melod Mashiach, then you'll understand what, you'll be able to see how the, you know, how, what they thought was regal and royalty and covered for a king, you know, before Mashiach, and I appreciate like what that, how it pales in comparison to like the, the cover that uh, the Melech Mashiach is received and is worthy of. So that, that's the point, that's the point. So you, it's important, you won't be able to appreciate, you won't be able to appreciate all the cover, the, 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 the dimensions of it, until you've seen it otherwise. I'll tell you, remind, this reminds me of this, a line someone said to me. It's a funny, it's a funny line. You, you'll scratch it when I say it to you. I heard a guy say, he said he doesn't do business with anyone who hasn't already made his first million dollars. It sounds very snobby. It is very snobby. But, but his, point, his point was, that he, in that context, his point was, uh, once if you... If you're not already on some level rich, so like any big number is a big number, a million, a billion, ten million, it's all the same, it's just, you know, it's a lot. And there's no appreciation for it. You don't differentiate between like rich and really rich and super duper duper rich or whatever, or a lot of money and a lot, a lot, a lot of money. The context was that we were in a meeting and some extra Israeli, Israeli guy at a company that um, he said, oh, our company, our company is worth $50 billion. It's worth more than whatever, he said, more than Teva. The guy was a little crazy, obviously. But the point is that when the meeting was over, this was the comments, a general comment, which is people don't really have a chop what $50 billion is because $50 billion is so much money like that you can't comprehend it. So $50 billion, what's the difference? But I should point out $50 billion is a thousand times more money than $50 million. If you lose, you, you, if you, if it's just big as big. Same way we kind of feel like, you know, we say the universe is whatever, you know, how many billions of light years across. Like, Billions of light years with difference. And millions of miles is the same thing. No, a million miles and a billion light years are like incompre- incomparable. The point is, if you've never seen a million miles, it might as well be a billion light years. So, the same kind of thing, in my mind, Shabbat Dimar is, yeah, of course, everyone will go see the Melech and Shiaf, and the whole world will be, you know, very excited, and he'll be the king. But you'll really appreciate how this is so extraordinary if you're not aware of what, like, regular kings of all their family used to get. If you can see that, you won't appreciate this. Whole different levels, like billionaire versus millionaire, so to speak.